beautiful Aries friends and welcome to your horoscope for 2021 where in 2020 the come apart happened and in 2021 we get to live within the new norms and what does that mean for you Aries well it means a little restructuring it means there's going to be some areas that are a little bit stubborn for sure but it also means that in this heavy air heavy Aquarian energy that we've got going this year air and fire love each other and your ability to expand in the direction you would like to go is very real and very possible this year, especially if you're willing to make a little bit of adjustment, okay? Now, as we jump into this year, we have Mars moving into the energy of Taurus. And like, look, I know you like having your ruling planet in your sign, it's very good, it's very comfortable, but also it's been a very long stay here. So it's time Aries to experience some different energies. So as Mars, Mars, as Mars moves into the energy of Taurus, we begin to light up your second house. And this is gonna be a theme for you this year in the second house about your values, not just how you make money, but genuinely your values and your beliefs around things, your possessions, what do you have? Are you spending your money wisely? Are you making money in a way that feels beneficial to you. Either way, some things that you started and reviewed in 2020 while Mars was in Aries then retrograded. As Mars is here in Taurus, Mars is ready to let this Taurus energy continue. Whatever you started at that time, dig into it and make it steady, make it stable, make it dependable in your life. So it's a beautiful energy to be starting out this particular year with. Now, Mercury retrograde is also going to start off our year. Mercury will retrograde three different times this year, January, May, and September, all in air signs this year. So if for the last couple of years, you've been feeling the wateriness around all of the Mercury retrograde energy. This year, we're going to retrograde into air, into the mind, into the thinking, into the intellect, the ideas that you have. You're going to review a lot of your thinking during a Mercury retrograde. January 30th, we're going to start this Mercury retrograde in the energy of Aquarius. So 11th house energy. Now, Saturn, Jupiter are also in the energy of Aquarius. So this is a year in 2021, Aries, where you are genuinely revisiting, reevaluating, reconsidering your friends groups. The 11th house is friends, groupings, associations, um, your social things, including social media. In the 11th house, you want to be seen and you want to be a part of. Now, the 11th house is also your long range goals and aspirations and dreams for yourself. So this year, you are adjusting to make sure that these things are in alignment with what you want next, right? Have you had the same friendship group for a very long time Then 2020 happened and it caused you to reconsider, is this my best and right alignment? Do you have a new interaction with technology, Aries? And now you're gonna find your way through that. Whatever it is, this particular retrograde and all of this airy energy happening through Aquarius puts a big stamp of 2021 on your social friendship, long range goals houses, okay? The next retrograde from Mercury we will see will be in May. This will be in the energy of Gemini lighting up your third house space. Now we've also got several eclipses that are going to happen this year between Gemini and Sagittarius. So this is going to be a lot of the thinking houses for you. Your thinking, your beliefs, your mindset, the things that you have in your head. Do you need to go back to studying something, get some education, something like that. A communication, a contract, something like that will be something we see you doing some renegotiating on as we get to this May time frame. Now in September, we're going to have that last Mercury retrograde that's going to happen in the energy of Libra. So right across the street, it'll be in the seventh house. You're going to review significant, conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether this be business, your enemies, your marriage, your relationship with this thing that you call a higher power, your relationship with you also fits in here as well. So just know by the time we get to September, relationships come up and it's time to really do a chat about those. Now, a big set of energies that we've got happening all through 2021 are the Saturn and Uranus square. Now, they've danced with each other a bit in 2020, but they're going to get tighter and they're going to exact each other as we get into 2021. And this is a big deal. As Saturn and Uranus come together, they create a clash. They create this energy where 
you know, Uranus, it wants to, wants to rise above, wants to see what's next, wants to break down the structures that are not working in our lives. And Saturn wants to create the structures. So this is this kind of energy, even though it's a square, it can feel a little push pull, right? You're like, well, I like being over here in my 11th house. I like my second house. And these energies are like Aries. We have to break out. You have to see where this is not a useful alignment for you anymore. And I will tell you at every stop, of the Saturn Uranus square. Please do not resist the changes that are coming. Be in the uncomfortable, be in the new, whatever's coming up for you, don't resist the change. These two bodies are going to be squaring each other in fixed energy, Aquarius and Taurus. Neither energies want to give up and they don't give up easily. So the more you resist between your 11th house and your second house making these changes, the harder it will be. Now we're going to see those two square each other February 17th, June 14th, and December um, 24th. So you can watch for those things. Now we're also going to see that Jupiter is going to move into the energy of Pisces this year, another sign that it also rules. So this is going to happen the first time, May 13th till about July 27th, 28th, just depending on where you are. So in the energy of Pisces, this is your 12th house. This is like the expansive spirituality space of your chart. There is a spiritual sense of reasoning. There is a generosity. There is a sense of cleaning up and cleaning out the past, acknowledging this space in between the world's areas where you can literally create. You can create something beautiful for yourself. Now I'll tell you before Jupiter gets into Pisces, he's of course in that Aquarian energy. So you're literally getting some spiritual help, this guardian angel that is Jupiter in your 11th house as well to help guide you through, you know, do, do I really feel like I fit here? Can I really care for the people that are in this area? And then as Jupiter moves to the 12th house, you get to uncover some things that are maybe back there, maybe living in this in between the worlds to help you spiritualize, guard you, protect you and help you walk forward with a fair amount of faith. It's absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to see Jupiter take that retrograde until December, but then he'll jump back in at the end of the year into the energy of Pisces for his stay. Okay. Now, when we see Jupiter make this move, it's also going to interact with the eclipses that we have this year. So we've got May 26, a lunar eclipse happening at, at in Sagittarius in your ninth house. So this lunar eclipse is going to say we need to end, acknowledge, or make a big adjustment, an adjustment that's going to last about six months to something in your educational zone, higher education, legal things happen up here, ethical things, moral things, but more so than anything, anything that allows you to expand out is what this moon is going to ask you to take some stock of your, your worldly experiences, broadening, broadening your horizons, things that will push you to the next level of some higher learning, higher knowledge and higher connection as well. On June 10th, we're going to see a solar eclipse happening in the energy of Gemini. This again lights up that third house energy I was talking about. Now at the solar eclipse, you know, we want to plant seeds of intention to begin something. The third house, study, communication, decision making. Maybe you want to buy some property. Maybe you want to sell something. If you buy or sell anything between these eclipses in the third and the ninth house, this is so great for sales. It is so great for marketing and making any adjustments that need to be made so that these can... So so as we get to November, we're going to see an eclipse and it's like the oddball kind of out. <laughs> it's going to happen in the energy of Taurus. So lighting up the second house, Uranus is over here. We've been shaking up your values. We've been shaking up your second house. We've had the Saturn Uranus square pushing you to realign your values, your belief, look at your finances and all of those things. So as we have this lunar eclipse, I think when we get to this point in the year, you're really looking at, am I living um, in my budget? What am I doing with my money? What are my means of disposable income, passive income that I have, as well as you have reset your year. You've reset a new set of norms. Where are you in your self-esteem? Where are you in how you're valuing yourself out there in the world and on the inside areas? That'll be a great question to be asking yourself. Now, December 4th is going to be our last eclipse for the year, and it's going to happen at 12 degrees Sagittarius. So again, in this ninth house space for you. Now, this Jupiter moving into Pisces puts a particular emphasis on the eclipses that we're going to experience in May and December. So with Jupiter giving some emphasis here because he's the ruling planet of Sagittarian energy, one of the things that I think we see here, as well as these eclipses being there with the south node, is this idea that um, it's going to, it's going to, 
Create the space where it's very easy to fall back into what you know, or it's very easy to want to be comfortable in what you already know. And instead, with these moons, what we really want to still be doing is moving towards that north node, but not be afraid to explore what's happening in our ideas, our beliefs, our being in that transiting south node as well, which is a lot about old knowledge, an old way we've been thinking about doing things, a way that we've been doing things for so long that we think this is the only way to do that. Old experiences, right? Old faith, right? At this point in 2021, where are you at with your faith? Are you still growing in your spiritual life? And as a human, are you still growing? This is a beautiful question to ask as this Jupiter energy creates this um, connection with these moons as well. Now, when we get to December 20, when we get to December 19th, what we're going to see is Venus taking a retrograde. Now, Venus is going to retrograde in the energy of Capricorn. So this is at the tip top of the chart. So in your 10,000, thousand, when this happens, you're going to reevaluate your finances at work. You're going to reevaluate these relationships at work. This is a realignment energy to the fullest. So really in some of your working relationships, I wouldn't be surprised at all either Aries if you do take some kind of promotion or some kind of new title this year and then you have to realign. And if that hasn't happened, definitely by the time we're hitting this Venus retrograde, I think the realignment is definitely on the table here. Now, if it is not in alignment, Venus is not traditionally aggressive. So I don't think she comes at this area of your life in an aggressive fashion. What I think she's going to do is be so loving and so diplomatic. Tell you if this relationship, whatever that may be, is not working out, cannot be rebalanced um, on both sides of the table. I think that this will be a time in this retrograde that you will be ready to um, to let that go. Now, if you're entering into any kind of partnership, especially something that had been started earlier in the year, this will be a nice solid energy for you to work with as well. And as we end the year, we see Jupiter jumping back into the energy of Pisces, ready to walk us through Piscean energy in 2022. So I think that this is going to be a good year. It is going to be a year of adjustments. There are stubborn energies. There are stubborn energies happening in our outer planets. So there will be stubborn energies happening in our day-to-day -day world. You have the opportunity to really get your hands, your feet, and your heart into your own home, into your own ideas and thinking that drive and dominate you this year to make the adjustments for the culture, the life, the home, the career that you would like to see for years to come. Oh, Aries, I look forward to seeing you every week, every month, in the Eat and Breeds, on Patreon, and just everywhere that astrology and the world is happening this year. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you all year. Bye, Aries.